my name is Liesl. Today I'm going to show you five different ways to add backgrounds to your product images. Now for your web shop, Etsy shop, Shopify, I would always suggest to keep your products on a nice white background. It's professional, uniform and the client can see exactly what they're getting. But you will get plenty opportunity to use fun backgrounds for your product images. If you use it for your Instagram, Pinterest, for your marketing newsletter, if you have any other marketing activity or poster that you want to do. So if this sounds interesting to you, come with me. To illustrate our first background, let's create our first product image. So we will log into Canva. We will go to create a design, scroll down to custom size, Today, my image will be 1,500 by 1,500 pixels. Create new design. You can either cut out your product images with Canva Pro or use a free tool like remove.bg. If you've got an image ready on your computer, you can go to upload, upload your file and then it will appear here on the left hand side when you go to upload. So there's my tin, I will click on it and then it will appear on the canvas. To illustrate, I'm also going to upload the PNG logo of Studio Herbs today. Um, it means that the logo is on a see-through background and that will be very important. You will see why as we go along. So I've uploaded it as well and I will click it on. And I'm just going to put it here in the top. I'm not using it as a watermark. Uh, watermarks doesn't really help because nowadays we've got so many design tools that can easily erase anything on an image. I'm simply adding the logo as extra branding. Let's click on the background and this blue line will appear. As soon as we do that, the little color blocks block will appear. Let's click on there. We can scroll down and then you will see all your default colors available. So let's click on the slide gray. And now you can see why it's so important that firstly your image is cut out and that if you use a logo or something like that, that, that would also be on a see-through background. Because if that was not the case, then there where the blue lines are, it would have been on a white background and it wouldn't look very nice at all. Okay, so you can either choose one of these colors as your plain background or if you've got a specific color um, of which you've got the code, you can simply type your hex code here into the top. And then you can use one of your branding colors. So that is the first way to do it. For our next background, let's duplicate this image, duplicate page. We will click on this color background again, click onto the color box, delete our code, scroll down, and just below the default colors, we will find the gradients. So now you can add a gradient effect if you like to. So here you can see if I clicked onto this one, it will start with quite white on the one side and then move over to a darker grey, which is quite nice. You can use pink and yellow, whatever, whatever effect you want, depending on what the purpose of this image will be. I think for this example, I'll stick with the white to grey. Next up, we are going to do a pattern background. So we will go to our image above here again, duplicate page, click on the background, just make it white. Then we will go over to elements, search elements, just type in pattern. And then you will see lots of options coming up. Let's choose one. I'm going to use this grid. If I click onto it, it will jump over onto the canvas. Right click. This specific one did not give me the option to set it as a background. If that happens, you can click out of it again. 
just drag the corners so that it fills up the background. Right click on it again, go to layer and then you can send it to back and the background will actually then appear behind your little tin and behind the logo. Let's do a background with an image. So we will duplicate our page again. Let's delete our pattern off there. We will go over to elements and this time we will search for an image. Let's think about it. Let's try something watercolor. Let's see what comes up. Watercolor. Okay, so here we've got all different graphics. Of course, you can use them. They've also got all photos. Let's try this one. Right click. Aha, here we go. Set image as background. And then it will automatically fill up the space for you. That actually looks pretty nice. That's quite fun. Okay, let's try another image. Duplicate. And let's search something like, seeing that this is a summer breeze tea, let's put in breeze, see what comes up. Ah. Something natural. Let's try this one, right click, scroll down, replace background. Hmm. Not quite, let's try summer flowers. Ooh, okay, right, this one, right click, replace background, there you go. See? Before we move on to our final background, let's just recap on what we've done. So let's scroll back. So we've got our plain color background, our gradient background, our pattern background. Then we used an image in watercolor and we also used the photograph. And isn't it unbelievable the big variety of images that you can create from just one product image. But next up, something really exciting. So let's create a mock-up. So duplicate page, we delete the background. Now you might wonder, what is a mock-up? Well, a mock-up is when you add your product image to an already existing photo so that in the end it looks as real as possible. This is really handy for starter businesses, small businesses, where you don't have a lot of um, budget to do photo shoots and things like that. But that doesn't have to keep you back because I'm going to show you a few tricks. So let's just remove the logo as well for now. We will go again to Elements, search Templates. And here's one that I've already chosen for you. It's called Shadow Studio Room Background. I will click that over to my canvas, right click on it and set it as image background. Now you can see this actually looks like a shelf. Um, my tin is obviously not in the right place and it's a little bit too big, I think. So let's make it slightly smaller. We move it to the front in the middle so that it looks like it's standing on that shelf. We can maybe add a little bit of a shadow quickly, so edit photo. Scroll down, go to shadows, drop shadow. Let's make our shadow a light gray again. There we go. And now it actually looks like this thing was photographed against this wall. Quite nice. Let's do another one. Duplicate. Let's remove that background. Let's search kitchen shelf. Photos. Oh, that's quite cute. Let's see. That one is the background. Mm -hmm. I don't want that. Let's right click again. We will detach it. 
and the reason is because it's a square and the photo is a rectangle if i set it as a background a lot of this detail will actually be cut off so that's not what i want so i will just do it by myself resize it and move it where i need to right click on the image and send it to back and now my little tin needs to be a little bit smaller so that we've Put it down on the shelf and there we go let's quickly add another tin i've uploaded the raw image here into canva so let's click it on we will go to edit photo background remover make it a little bit smaller put it down on the shelf Let's add a little bit of shadow, so let's go down, shadows, drop, just want to make it in a light grey, click out of it, and then you've got a shelf with two tetons. I hope you enjoyed this, I hope you learned something new today, if you've got any questions, leave a comment below, and looking forward to see you again, thank you, and bye bye!